Okay, to begin our discussion of the supply curve, we start by talking about quantity supplied for a commodity, which we abbreviate uh, in this lecture as QS. And the quantity supplied for a commodity can be thought of as being the function of several other variables. Uh, the price of the commodity, um, expectations for the future, cost of production, lots of other stuff. Um, to begin, we're going to just focus on the relationship between prices and quantity supply, okay? And the way that we do this at the start is we construct a supply schedule. And the supply schedule, as you see here, will have one column for the price per unit of a commodity, in this case, the, the daily quantity supplied of oil measured in barrels. And as the price per unit rises from $10 a barrel to $30 a barrel, or barrel to $60 a barrel, we see that the mark, that seller's willingness to supply, their, their quantity supplied, also rises. And we label each one of these price quantity combinations with a letter. Now, there are two ways to interpret what the supply schedule is actually telling you. One way is to start with price, so for instance $10 a barrel, and solve for the maximum quantity that the market is willing to supply at that price. So at $10 a barrel, the maximum quantity that sellers are willing to supply is 20 barrels. At $60 a barrel, the maximum quantity supplied is 120 barrels. Another way of interpreting what the supply schedule tells you is you start with quantity supplied and solve for price. And the way that you should interpret this, this perspective is, you know, starting with the first row here, okay, what is the minimum price that sellers are willing to accept in order to sell the 20th barrel of oil, $10? What is the minimum price that sellers are willing to accept in order to supply the 60th barrel of oil, $30? And if you think about it, what that minimum price that sellers are willing to accept can be interpreted as is just really the economic cost of production. Oftentimes we refer to this as the reservation price for sellers. If it costs you know, $20 to make that 40th barrel of oil, well then it makes a lot of sense that sellers would not sell it for less than $20. Now, typically, we're not going to actually use supply schedules. We're going to revert to supply curves. So here I've got an example where I just kind of show point B and point D. We can use those exact same two interpretations. So the horizontal perspective starts at price and solves for the maximum quantity supplied. So at a, at a price of $40 a barrel, the maximum quantity supplied is 80 barrels. Or we can take a vertical perspective and get that other interpretation that calls for the reservation price for a seller, uh, i.e. the economic cost of production. So what is the cost of producing that 80th barrel, i.e. what is the minimum price that sellers are willing to accept to sell that 80th barrel? It is $40 a barrel. Now, the fact that we have this nice upward sloping supply curve, the upward sloping nature of the supply curve uh, indicates that typically, and we call this the law of supply, when price increases, quantity supply will also increase. So if, if price goes from 20 to 40, we see that quantity supply rises from 40 to 80. And conversely, if price were to fall from 40 to, say, 20, then we can expect quantity supply to decline, in this example, from 80 to 40. That positive relationship between price and quantity supplied um, is oftentimes referred to as the law of supply. Why the law of supply? Well, remember that what the height of the supply curve is measuring is the economic cost of, of producing a particular quantity of output, a particular barrel, in this case, the qth unit. So the fact that the, that the supply curve is, is upward sloping indicates that some barrels, okay, okay, those down, have lower cost of production relative to those later barrels. Okay, So one way of viewing what the supply curve's upward slope tells us is that low-cost producers, okay, low-cost barrels, are down here somewhere, and high cost barrels are up here somewhere. At any given price, let's say P, okay, quantity supplied is Q because it's only these sellers who actually have a cost below the price. Okay, so these are other sellers who are actually willing to sell their oil in the marketplace because their, their minimum price uh, they're willing to accept falls below the actual market price. So in this example here, at a price of, 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 of P, we have Q sellers all along this dark red portion of the supply curve who have an economic cost below or at P. And then for all the sellers up here 
who have an economic cost above P, well, they're not going to sell this commodity because the price is below the cost of production. So now, that said, the law of supply uh, exists because when the price rises, in this example, from P up to, say, P prime, so we see an increase in the quantity supplied. As price increases, it gradually rises above more and more sellers' minimum willingness to accept. And it's these sellers in this little increment here that are now willing to sell the, their commodity at this higher price, whereas before, at, at the lower price, they were not. And conversely, if price were to fall from P prime down to P, we would see a reduction in quantity supplied from Q prime down to Q, and that's because these sellers in this little increment right here are now no longer willing to sell their output because price has fallen below their reservation price, below their, their, their economic cost of production.